Hi, everyone. All right. I get this email from my subscriber in Texas. Tornado Watch just issued here until 11 p.m. This was the subscriber who sent me an email just a couple of days ago. We have a tornado watch uh, up until whatever time it was. Tornadoes. Do you know there were 23 tornadoes in the last 24 hours? But when she sent me this email, well, I do go to radar quite often, and lo and behold, lo and behold, I see the sudden, the suddenness of lined, lined up storms in Texas. And of course, you have the frequencies down here in the Gulf, but it was pretty amazing. Now, there are tornado warnings in Atlanta. There was a really huge tornado in Mississippi, Tupelo. Uh, so let's, let's just look at what's happening here. The suddenness of all of these lined very severe storms. And what about um, College of DuPage? Look at that. The sudden development right along a line. Can you see the line? Can you see the frequencies right that squared off box of frequency? Okay, well, this is what we're living. This is just what we're living. It's so... Texas, you've got a Weather Modification Association. They have a YouTube page, a YouTube channel, where you can listen to them talk about modifying your weather. Okay, I'm tired. You know... For years, whenever I did a weather video, I would bring up those videos. I can't do it anymore. Look at these incredible, huge, what we used to call harp rings. The uh, signature of high frequency heating from Doppler radar. High frequency heating. Yes, they shoot off these very intense high frequencies into the ionosphere, pushes up the ionosphere when they let go of those frequencies. What comes shooting back down to Earth? Extremely low frequencies in which they can create earthquakes and hurricanes and, well, a whole lot of weather destruction, which is what we are living but look at this line that you, it's right smack in your face. Here, goes right along this line. And that line, as based on my research, I am going to say that this is a nanobot line. Nanotechnology, don't leave your stupid comments that I'm crazy. You only reveal your own stupidity. Weather modification playlist on my channel. Whole lot. Over 200 videos. I think maybe over 300 videos on how man can modify the weather. And on that channel or playlist, what do I have? I have videos on Texas weather. Modification. Association. Even a news clip of the head of the uh, we uh, Texas Weather Modification Association saying that, ooh, we can make it rain longer, for longer periods of time, in a larger scale, larger area, and then every time I hear that, I think, Harvey, how long did it rain?
But no, even with your Weather Modification Association has a YouTube channel, there they are talking about modifying your weather. Those of you in Texas can't get through to your fellow Texans. But there is a line right here. And yes, this nanotechnology, the nanobots up in the atmosphere, uh, they can activate them and they can create stratus clouds and they can create what you're looking at right here. And that's why a whole lot of storms now are popping up out of nowhere because people aren't getting any warnings about these storms until they're right upon them. So, um, oh man, it, it just, is, it, it's not stopping. It won't, it's not stopping. It just doesn't stop. South Carolina got hit with bad storms. Mississippi got hit with bad storms. Texas, you already have hell coming down. And uh, aren't you tired? Aren't you tired of this? I am. I'm really tired of this. Look at this. Look at the clouds that suddenly come up. Wow. Now that's quite the line of nanobots. And all of these uh, white sparkling, what you, what, you think that's a cloud? No. Those are nanobots being activated to bring about the cloud. They can just hit that cloud with a laser and bring down an awful lot of flooding. Isn't it amazing what man can do with the technology that man has? Look at this. Are you kidding me? Wow. Look at this line and all of these clouds that I guess the weather is going to the east, right? I mean the wind, right? It's got to go. Well, but this is going north. north. This is going east. The, oh, well. This is going south, kind of turning around. This is going north. This is going north, northeast. Whip around, whip around those winds. Whip around the air masses. What can you create? You can create a tornado. Amazing, isn't it? Now. Oh. In addition, since the last time I looked at it, you've got the chemtrailing. You've got that obvious signature of <laughs> geoengineering. Look at this. Well, what's going on here? Okay, uh, you definitely have all of the, your nanobots, right? These little uh, lines of what dotted cloud, and you've got the chemtrails, and you've got the air masses going every which way. You've got these. And they can, with electromagnetic frequencies, you can do an awful lot. Electromagnetic frequencies, well, they can shift around the air masses, and they can make air masses going in different speeds. All of that collides together to create an awful lot of atmospheric instability in which they can create a lot of damage. That's exactly what they've been doing for a whole long time, and that damage is only increasing. It's been increasing, increasing. 2020, what did I say? Oh my God, I cannot believe what I am seeing with our weather. Now we're at 2021, and well, 23 tornadoes in 24 hours, and the South is getting hit over and over and over again. Okay, I, I have a real problem with stupidity. I have a real problem with 
irresponsibility. I have a real problem with immaturity. And, well, that's our country filled. Look at this, the blowing up of cloud. Now, Atlanta, you got your tornado warning. It's unbelievable. None of it. All manufactured. Oh, and here you have the deactivation of nanobots. Oh, they just kind of disappear. Oh, by blips of cloud. Yeah, it's uh, it's unfortunate. That can't even get people to look into it. Look, a whole line of your nanobot creation of cloud. But you also have these winds whipping up in a whole lot of areas. And lo and behold, you've got tornado warnings in Texas again, which is tornado Fort Worth, Dallas, and west of that area. Yeah, as I'm coming along to watch what was happening on radar and satellite, what do I get? I get this. Um, the current time is 5.41 p.m. Central Daylight Time. You are listening to NOAA, All Hazards Radio, the voice of the National Weather Service, station KEC 56, serving the Dallas-Fort Worth listening area. The National Weather Service in Fort Worth has issued a severe thunderstorm warning for Eastern Wise County in North Central Texas, Northwestern Denton County in North Central Texas, until 5.45 p.m. Central Daylight Time. At 5.05 p.m. Central Daylight Time, a severe thunderstorm was located near Paradise, or near Decatur, moving northeast at 30 miles per hour. Hazard, golf ball-size hail and 60 miles per hour wind gusts. Source, radar indicated. Impact, people and animals outdoors will be injured. Expect hail damage. That doesn't mean something has gone on with with what is a manufactured another storm. But when I was doing this, I was pointing out the microwaves, the electromagnetic frequencies in use, and look at the several different directions the air masses are moving, the blowing up of cloud, and it just continues. I can't, and you, you can see that some of these air masses are moving very, very quickly. So, um, but this, you know, couldn't be more obvious. Just couldn't be more obvious. Yes, nanobots in the atmosphere. Our atmosphere is filled with nanobots and... They can activate these nanobots. As you can see, they, they are being activated here in Texas. Yes, the wonders of technology. Just so wondrous. So, I don't know what was going on here, but... For North Central Texas, for your protection, get inside a sturdy structure and stay away from windows. <coughs> per hour. Hazard, 60 miles per hour wind gusts. Tell 
uh, from this vantage point. Come out uh, to me here in the chroma key so I can point out a couple of things. Uh, let's put that, can we put that picture back up so I can point out a couple of things? Hard to tell <clears throat> sometimes, you know, of course if you're out there and you see, you see the thing spinning, right, then it's pretty obvious that you have rotation. Uh, that camera, that picture that you showed me just a moment ago, if we can put that picture back up on the screen, kind of hard to tell if this is, if this is our actual wall cloud right here. And if this is a lowering of the wall cloud, that's, that's a, a bit difficult to tell from this vantage point. This could be a scud cloud, which is just really, it's just really a, a, a part of a storm that just hangs down. It's just some lowering clouds is all that. They just make shit up. So, close range land spout tornado in Aurora, Nebraska. Now, I can't play this video. It's Livestorms Media. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, this is exactly, and if you do go to my playlist, Weather Modification, uh, I have videos on a particular patent, Weather Modification by Artificial Satellite, satellite emitting an awful lot of electromagnetic frequencies to bring about what you are looking at right here. Right here. Okay, here we go. Severe weather on the move. More than 40 million are on alert right now after a report of 23 tornadoes touched down in the south. And there are new threats this morning. Ginger is tracking the latest for us. Good morning, Ginger. Good morning, Robin. We're coming off in April, where we saw the fewest tornadoes in more than 20 years. But May is coming in hot. We got a third of what we got in April in just the last 24 hours. Overnight, twisters slicing through Mississippi. This drone video that you're watching now is from a tornado in Yazoo City. The wide wedge captured at close range. Debris flying. Then the drone gets destroyed by the powerful inflow winds. Strong tornado. And on the ground, this tornado seen crossing a road. Trees tossed, power lines snapped, homes and businesses damaged. Rescue crews working through the night. At least 23 tornadoes reported across the plains in just 24 hours. In Nebraska, Louisiana, and Colorado, too. We could see nighttime tornadoes again, and I want to show you the area that has to be on the lookout with this system. You have Fayetteville, Arkansas, over to Louisville, Kentucky, anywhere from the damaging winds and tornadoes, but there could be giant hail. We're talking monster hail, Lubbock up to Tulsa. So that's today. There's even more threat as we go through this week, and you know we are going to keep you updated. Robin? Yes, threat, 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 threat. That's what we live here. Threats. Just threats. This was tornado caused damage in Tupelo, Mississippi. I think this is, I don't know if it was the same in Yahoo, but maybe, I don't know. But uh, tornadoes were never so massive, nor did they go on for miles and miles and miles and miles. They were generally narrow and they would not you know continue on I mean over the years these tornadoes have grown and grown and they do It hit several parts of the city, but it could have been a lot worse. Now, the public works director tells me that, you know, there's been several storms that have hit Tupelo over the years, and this one actually isn't that bad because of the places that it hit. Now, that public director says it's the trees that really started to make the issues. And they say that, you know, he's been working there for 15 years, and it's the big trees that caused the problem. These trees right here, most of them been big. That's the thing about them. They're huge trees. They're not small trees. So, and it's and the one thing gonna help us out is they in one part of the town. You know, the whole city ain't, you know, not tore up. So, that's the good thing. And it's not bad. It could have been a whole lot worse. 
likely there have uh, been no deaths that have been reported. Now, later tonight at 10, we'll introduce you to a family that had another... <sighs> Trees. Trees. They, you know... Uh, did you take a look at how sick this tree was with the fungal disease? You know, that's what you see over and over and over again. And these, well, when you have the spraying of toxic metals and other toxic ingredients like the metals, aluminum and strontium and barium and lithium, they go into the root system and these trees are very susceptible to getting very diseased and weak and weak. They weaken their immune system and huge trees seem to just topple over. That's what we're seeing over and over again. Um, so I was on my way home from getting some supper right down the street. Um, my mother called me and told me that she was at a friend's house and told me that some, like the storm was coming and I should probably get there so we could all be in one location together. And when I, right as I pulled up, um, is when the rotation had like arrived on the other side of the lake from where we were at. So you could probably, you could easily see it definitively from the back porch of the house we were staying at and you could watch it as it passed over the uh, neighborhood. Um, right after it had passed, um, the first instinct was to kind of just hold down for a minute until everything kind of got calmed down. Um, but then I t uh, ran over here to my house to get some supplies and bring it back over there. But before I did that, the first thing I did was I kind of drove around the neighborhood and made sure everyone was okay and got kind of a damage assessment of everything that had taken place. So that was kind of the first initial reaction. It's, the damage is kind of made navigating the neighborhood a maze, and I couldn't even get to the street that I live on um, after everything had taken place. So far, the only response we have gotten is a estimated time for the power to be back on, but even that's kind of up in the air. So there's, I, I can't really confirm if there's even been a damage response in this area. Um, I believe there's something like eight to ten power lines down in this neighborhood alone, and that's kind of that's made certain streets completely inaccessible. About 10 minutes before this happened, I got us in the bathroom, me and my little girl and my husband and our dog, and it was just, I didn't even hear the tree. Next thing I know, I hear my mother-in-law come outside. She says, everything's okay, but the tree's down, and that's supposed to be a 250-year-old live oak tree. I know that for sure that we've got some real damage down on Spring Ridge Road near Wendell Church on Spring Ridge, and we also here on Gary Road. And here at Lake Ridgely, we've got one trailer with a tree across it, but those people are okay. Massive tree. Where are... Okay, trees this size used to have roots that were so long and strong and thick and weather didn't take them down. Now, well, all of the spraying, the toxic spraying, that uh, it's still discussed by mainstream media as if it hasn't really taken place. Oh, they've done an experiment there, an experiment here. No, it's been going on for decades, only increasing. And boy, all one need do is look up. Look up. Hey. The sky is very different from what it was decades ago. I don't blame the younger generation because they got the different sky. And that's all they know. Where's the roots? The toxic spraying eats away at the roots. across Mississippi spent a day cleaning up after multiple tornadoes struck on Sunday. Intense storms swept through communities in and around Tupelo, tearing up trees and destroying homes. Some were in disbelief today after seeing the damage. I really don't know. I don't, I don't know. I just had never seen nothing like this before. 
to have that happen to me, you know. It just hurt. There were no reports of deaths or injuries in Mississippi. What's going to happen later on? This is, uh, I believe, in Atlanta. Am I right? Let's see. Let's go to Joe Hankey live in a neighborhood in South Fulton. Joe, that area was hit hard. We see the damage there. Yeah, it's easy to see the damage behind me, Cheryl. About a block behind me is the intersection of Fulton Industrial Boulevard and Riverside side drive where i'm at right now is actually a an, an industrial area in this area trees power lines roofs it all came crashing down as that storm came through this afternoon in neighborhoods along cascade road this afternoon you could hear the familiar post severe storm sound of chainsaws trees are down everywhere over there just about walking through the maze of down trees and closed roads to reach her home and check on the damage is Ernestine Holloman. God spared us, and I am so grateful because all those trees are down and it just looked really bad. But we've just been blessed. Blessed, Holloman says, because her home is safe and so too is her family. There are homes, though, with obvious damage after trees crashed onto roofs on street after street in southwest Atlanta, 7, including Cameron Williams' home. I hear a noise like woof, right? And it comes to sound like a train. So that's the fastest I ever got up. As the storm approached, Williams grabbed his mother and made his way to a safe place and then heard a loud boom. I come out here later on, this happens. And it's just all over the place. A tree landed on Williams' carport, causing it to collapse. The size of the storm is easy to see by taking a 15-minute drive to this area along Fulton Industrial Boulevard, where more trees are down. Walls were torn off the sides of buildings. HVAC units and roof shingles were tossed onto the ground, and power crews are now busy getting power lines back up into the air. And in all of the neighborhoods that were hit, we're still seeing a lot of down power lines. We're seeing a lot of standing water where you can't tell what exactly is ahead of you. There's trees still blocking some roadways. So the best advice right now, if you don't live in one of the neighborhoods that was impacted, just stay home. We'll send it back to you in studio. All right. Stay home. Lock your doors. Lock your windows. Get into the bathtub. Don't use the phone. Well, Portia, we just got on scene a couple of minutes ago. You can see the extent of the damage. This hood of this car is all smashed up. The windshield, too. It looks like someone all, or the storm just smashed through this uh, driver's side window. This other car uh, also took a pretty bad beating. You can see all around me, there's debris on the ground, roofing, sheets of metal. Now, over there, there's a bus that looked like it was just caught in it, in the thick of it. Now, I spoke to a, a couple people just a moment ago who were inside one of these buildings. They said they had barely any warning to get to shelter. We got the alert on our phones, and about 60 seconds later, everything hit. We ran to the bathroom for cover, stayed there for maybe two minutes, and came out to this. And what did you hear? What did you see? It was a lot of rumbling, a lot of rumbling. But before it hit, I was actually on the phone with my coworker and telling them the trees were sideways, but they're still standing. Um, so that's what we saw, just trees sideways, a lot of rain and a lot of wind. And you can see some of the, the tree limbs actually snapped here. It doesn't look like there's any down trees, but the power company is on scene right now. You can see they have a power uh, pole at the ready to replace it. Now, this seems to be a, a very active situation. There's trucks on the other side over there uh, trying to get into this warehouse. They can't right now because of this damage. Of course, we're going to stay on top of this and continue to track the damage here in South Fulton. But for now, that's latest live from the scene. Rob Burianzo, Fox 5 News. Fortunately, she got an alert on her phone that gave her one minute. The weather moved through the Midlands today. Oh, South Carolina. Producing strong storms, heavy rain and hail. We've got video from News 19 viewers all over the area. This is from a viewer in Red Bank, golf ball size hail. As the system moved through that area, JR, here's something else. We do. We have a closer look at some of the hail in Red Bank. Our weather watcher, Susanna Naomi, sharing with us pictures. If we can put those pictures up now, showing us just how big the hail was this afternoon. Again, we do not have that picture. Our apologies for this video coming to us from our in, in our information center as well, Darcy. Uh, a tree falling on top of an SUV on Augusta Road 
in Lexington County. A News 19 viewer sharing this yeah, video so with us. As emergency uh, crews worked to get the people out of the car, it was crushed, as you can see, uh, by wow. that tree. That is incredible video to look at right there as we take a look at it. Again, uh, luckily nobody, I, I don't believe, was hurt in this accident, correct, Darcy? We're still waiting to get more information back from Lexington County on that. Of course, we'll continue to update our viewers, not only on air, but also online. But pictures like that just literally take your breath away. Yep. Texas. Hailstorm, North Texas. Here it comes. All right, so, you know, do you realize how often this is occurring now? Um, I, it's, it's close to a day, on a daily basis. This massive tornado in Mississippi, I don't know if Fish News would, I just don't want to chance it, but yeah, this is this whole thing is supposed to be a tornado, really? Ah, uh, come on. Maybe that little it's hanging down. Notice how straight lined, flat lined is this cloud. Oh man. Well stay safe everyone. You guys down south, you guys in Texas. Oklahoma, all of you, all of you, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, and Texas. Stay safe. And hear what people are saying. I got a 60-second, you know, alert. I had 60 seconds. A whole lot of people are saying, I watched the news, and they didn't even say that we were getting a storm. Or tornadoes happen, and the sirens are not going off. When you see what I showed you, this is an immediate creation of cloud from nanotechnology. When you see how quickly these things can pop up, pop-up storms is what they call them, actually, pop-up storms. Yeah, okay. And they're uniting and bringing about greater, bigger precipitation. When these things can just arise, that means you need to sit down with your family, discuss, you know, uh, how you're going to prepare and try to survive these weather events, but also, you know, have everything <clears throat> at your ready for any kind of weather event. And I'm sorry that this is the case that we all are living now. We're at war. They're using weather as a weapon. That's one of the weapons that they have to use against us.